1946, the only World Series you got in, losing seven games, four to three in the seventh game at Sportsman's Park against the Cardinals, and you, arguably the greatest hitter of all time, you go five for 20. Of course, Stan Musial, who hit 365 yeah, that year for the Cardinals, yeah. Went six for 24 yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. But when you win, it erases it. That's and right. then people said, hey, Williams doesn't come through in the clutch. Well, all I can tell you is that there's, I played over a period of 25 years in the minors, uh, uh, in the big leagues over a period of 22 years. Uh, you can put tab on anybody. Dempsey didn't fight anybody. Lewis didn't fight anybody. Williams didn't hit in a couple of games. So they put that that moniker on you. And all I can tell you is that I'm doing, or I'm involved in quite a, quite a study of the greatest hitters that ever lived. And the, 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 the formula we use on everybody, no matter what, what they did or where they did it, the formula we use on everybody uh, proves I think conclusively who were the greatest hitters in baseball and uh, despite what anybody might say I'm one two three and everything well you know as I said to you on the radio a few years ago you would have to strategically place as many hits as you got it'd be impossible <laughs> not to get a lot of clutch hits yeah, you got yeah. too damn many hits but let's let's put it bluntly all things considered given the fact that you span after all your career began only four years after Babe Ruth's ended it goes all the way up to 1960 it takes into account a new era, relief pitching, integration, night ball. Considering all that, and the 344 average, second slugging average behind Babe Ruth, highest on-base percentage ever, the home runs per time at bat, could you make a case for yourself as the best hitter who ever lived? I wouldn't even, I wouldn't like to say that I could make a case for myself. I love it when they say he's one of the greatest hitters that ever lived, and when I'm put in the category of Ruth and Gary and Simmons and Fox and Hornsby and Aaron and Mays and the Maggio, I'm that's good enough for me. That's good enough for me. But I want to tell you something. This is a research for you. In 19, in the 50s, in the 50s, and I played till, till 60, but in the early 50s, Look Magazine, pretty reputable magazine, highly thought of and everything else, wrote, the, and you should look it up, wrote one of the biggest articles that even in 1953 or 4 or 5, that I had had more game-winning hits than anybody in baseball history right then so it's and after that it got to where the sacrifice fly from third base i never got any chance for that let's walk him and get a double play our pitch so tough that it looks like we pitched to him but we didn't here's a little known fact by the way the sacrifice fly rule in terms of scoring and how it affects your batting average not in effect in 1941 yeah. you had six in effect sack flies you would have batted 412 that's right that's right and then they did change that so that the uh the two later hitters, Britt, great hitter, and, and uh, Carew. Carew, great hitter, uh, wouldn't have fared quite as well without the advantage of the sacrifice fly. And those hitters were more likely to get a chance, probably, to hit with a man on third than I did. Can you imagine a guy today coming into the last day of the regular season with a batting average of 399 plus that would round to 400? The pressures on him mm -hmm. from his agent, yeah. from his sponsors, yeah. to say, don't go out there. You're a 400 hitter. You'll market this into the next century. I mean, there was enough pressure on you, yeah. after all. No one had done it since Bill Terry, uh, I guess, 11 years earlier. No one has done it since. But you went out and played in the doubleheader never against the Philadelphia A's. I never honestly ever give it a thought. I didn't even think about not playing. I walked around Philadelphia all after night for near with the clubhouse kid, uh, worried about it. And, uh, and then Cronin suggested he that day. Joe Cronin, the manager. Joe Cronin, the manager, suggested that day, and I, I never give it a thought. I said, certainly I'm playing, you know. And I could have been unlucky and not done it, but I was lucky and they fell in. You went six for eight, yeah. right? In a doubleheader. Yeah, yeah, six yeah. for eight. That wasn't bad. <laughs> I like that. Hello, everyone. I spend a lot of time trying to get you guys nice videos, so please subscribe to this page, and please subscribe to my second page. The link to my second page is in the description section. Thank you.